Hello, everybody. Adonis, can I get share ability, please? Yeah, hold on one second, please. Okay. Try it now, please, Tanner. All right. Share. Yes, looks like I can share. Great. There's your sneak peek. Okay. Awesome. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining me on this lovely Friday, on this balmy Friday. Um, I want to talk to you guys today. I, you know, I was going to do a totally different topic. And then when I sat through the book club meeting and I realized like what the power of listings and it kind of caused me to pivot a little bit and think about how I can be a listing lender. I always hear agents say, oh, I'm a listing agent. I, I, I don't need a lender, I'm a listing agent. Well, you know what guys, I wanna be a listing lender because there are some great reasons why you want to be a listing lender. I kind of did these numbers for you on Tuesday. So for, for those of you who weren't with us on Tuesday, um, so I, mine, as you guys, most of you know, some of you are new on here, you don't know me. So let me introduce myself real quick. My name is Tammy Cranage. I am a lending leader with Loan Depot. I'm a certified mortgage advisor and I'm a black belt um, a black belt mortgage strategist, and that is per mortgage coach. So I have built my business on realtors being my niche and helping you guys buy and sell more real estate. I am not the lunch and learn where I'm just going to rattle off a bunch of products to you. I actually demonstrate things to you to show you how me as your lending partner can help you sell more houses. Because at the end of the day, when you sell more houses, I write more loans. So there, that's the method behind my madness. So I have been reading million your, your Bible, as I call it, um, talking about some things. And, you know, on page 42 of this book, it talks about the name of the game being listings. And some staggering numbers that I read in this book was that one person can handle 15 to 20 listings, I'm sorry, it says 15 to 25 listings per month. So your typical solo agent can carry 15 to 25 listings per month. That's a pretty staggering number. Now, you guys have a piece of paper and a pen, write down your average commission. So if you have, whatever your commission, buyer or seller, it's probably the same, right? Write down your average commission for one transaction. Now, if you had 20 listings per month, how much would that call, how much would that be? So someone shout out to me, what's the average, um, what's the average commission you, for a typical agent? It's like 10 grand, right? About, yeah, 10 grand. All right, so we'll use 10 grand. So you're getting $10,000 for one listing, for one transaction, that's 10,000, and I'm gonna say, let's say you're a little more on the conservative side and maybe you don't do 20. The average, from what I've seen off the MLS, the average agent probably does about 10 listings a year. So if you got 10 listings a year times $10,000, that's $100,000 in commission. Now, would you guys rather have basically one listing a month, or would you rather have one buyer a month? What's easier right now? Listings. So now, according to this book, a person can secure, but if we go by your, your gospel, according to Gary Keller, um, if you could do 10 listings a month, that's 10 listings times $10,000, that's $100,000 per month, actually let's do 20, it's $200,000 in commission. So if you're actually booking 20 listings every month for 12 months, you're grossing $200,000 a month. 
Like, could you even get your head around that? What would you guys do with $200,000 a month? That's what I'm saying. Go half. Forget, forget 20 a month. Just do 10 a month. How about if you just did five a month? Right? 50 grand a month for listings. A lot of people want to buy leads. They buy realtor.com. They buy Zillow. I wish I had a dollar for every person who asked me to fund their Zillow, their Zillow hits. So the average, according to your book, the average agent can handle seven to eight buyers per month. So you've got your Zillow people, you've got your past clients referrals. So if you're doing, again, $10,000 commission times eight buyers a month, that's $80,000. I know why I'm in mortgage because I only have to spend about six to eight weeks with some of these buyers. You guys have to spend a lot of time with them. Would you rather list their house or schlep them around and show them eight houses? So it's pretty straight, it's pretty clear then that most people want listings. And right now, listings is the name of the game. That's how you're gonna survive. Another fun fact that I got in here was that one listing property marketed, like one listing properly marketed should generate enough leads to produce a minimum of one closed buyer. So let's think about that for a minute. If you did 20 listings a month, you now have 20 buyers. And that is where I come in. So now you've got 20 buyers, you've got 20 listings, you're going to make $200,000 in commission by just generating by being focused on listings. Okay. So then the question is, well, how do you get listings? You guys, I've, I've read everything. James Shaw had um, the golden letter that they were sending for a while. Um, I did a whole campaign on it back in the fall, um, which was 13, a listing a day for 13 weeks. And it produced some great outcomes. But Cody Gibson, who is a KW alum, gave some really great stuff that you could use. So it's a 20 minute interview that I had with him that I'm gonna share and it's so powerful. I was gonna summarize it, but I'm gonna take the 20 minutes to play the whole interview. And then when we're done, I have what he talks about in this video, so I have it. So take really good notes because this Cody does not disappoint. So take really good notes. I, I recorded this back in October. And when it's done, we'll talk about it. And then I will show you what I can do to assist you with these listings, okay? Does anybody have any questions, comments, concerns? Grab your pens, ladies and gentlemen. This is a, this is a goodie, hold on. Now I gotta make sure I can share my, share the screen. That sound, okay. If you don't hear it, someone throw in the chat that you don't hear it. About our keynote speaker. Can you guys believe it? We are here at the 16th week. Believe it or not, we have made it all the way to 16 weeks. I'm so excited. For those of you who never touched technology before, you've never sent a video out, and now it's really changed the way that you do CMAs. So I want to, before I, I want to introduce Cody. Um, these numbers, I had to double check these numbers. He's done over a thousand sales in 2020, projected to, to, have, to put 1,500 homes under contract in 2021. He's put 147 homes in contract in a single month. 147 families in one month. He's a MAPS Bold coach with Keller Williams for 10 plus years. Yes, I'm bold twice over now. Um, operating partner of three Keller Williams offices, director of expansion and growth for Keller Williams, Rhode Island, uh, Keller Williams Realty. Um, he's been in real estate for over 20 years and he likes turkey sandwiches and long walks on the beach. So Cody, welcome. Thank you so much for your time. I truly appreciate it. So, um, Listings is the name of the game. So tell us, how have you done, how have you helped your teams get listings and stand out in this competitive low inventory market, starting with listings? 
Yeah, I appreciate it. So thank you for having me. It's my, my pleasure. And for those that have been on this whole um, journey for 16 weeks, um, I commend you. Good job. Um, I really believe at the end of the day, um, I know what you mean when you say listings are the name of the game. And I'd like to give you, for everybody listening, um, just a slight tweak to that. In fact, uh, Tammy, we were talking about this right before we went um, on here. And of course, you were like, you agreed that like we were talking about it. The, the real name of the game is personal standards. That's the real name of the game. Like, do you have a personal standard that every day you talk to somebody you weren't talking to already who might want to list their home? And if you do, then over the course of a few months or six months or 12, who really cares how long it takes? Two weeks, two days, two years, it doesn't matter. I think we get really wound up sometimes around how long something takes. And what I've learned coaching people is that when we ask a lot of questions about how long does it take, it usually just uncovers the fact that we're less than completely committed. If we're completely committed, who cares how long it takes? Maybe your journey is... 60 days or 60 weeks, who really cares? Like if you're committed to a craft or you're committed to working out or committed to achieving something, who cares how long? Some people it's a little faster, a little slower, maybe market driven. But I say all of that to say this, the people that I see succeeding right now at the highest possible level who have listings every single day, Mm. There are people who won't go to bed until they talk to someone they weren't talking to the day before. And on day four or five, maybe it doesn't happen. But they go to bed and they go, great, who do I have to talk to tomorrow? What list do I need ready? Where do I need to buy data from? Where should I be advertising? What should I? What should my marketing look like? Uh, should I be emailing out? Should I be using social media? Like, what do I do to create a new appointment every day? And when you really think about it, like, um, Lacey will drop this in the notes for you. I wrote an ebook that followed a course that I wrote um, that we first presented um, at KW's main event, like maybe had to be 2018. And it was seven steps to 10 listings. And it was seven duplicatable steps that you could do month after month after month to begin taking 10 listings every month. And if you think about that, you think about what your business begins to look like with 10 new listings a month. And the first thing that happens is you feel a little bit crazy. You feel a little bit busy, right? Like I remember the first time uh, that I took 10 listings in a month, I was so proud of myself and so happy. And it was like two weeks into the next month. And I won't bore you with the details, but one of my clients called and they said, hey, we don't mean to interrupt. And you know, we're a little worried about no showings. And while they were talking, I was boop, 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 boop. I was pulling it up on the, on the MLS, right? And I was like, ah, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Huh. Yep. I can tell you exactly why there's no showings. Um, I forgot to put it in the MLS. Um, they were kind, but they also freed me up to go work with other sellers, right? They fired my butt. And I remember a couple of things on that day. One, I remember being disappointed. It was like two weeks. Of fire. Like I'm a salesman, and so I want everything to work. It frustrates me when it doesn't. And at the same time, I had nine other listings to go deal with. So one of the lessons I learned was the lesson of the five-minute funeral. It's okay to have a five-minute funeral. Can't have a five-day funeral. We can't afford in our business to have a five-month funeral. Things don't go our way. So what? It's okay. Who do we help next? The other thing I learned was that I just wasn't used to it yet. And what I've learned by coaching, I don't know how many people now to 10 listings a month, the first time they do it, they usually fall dramatically down the next month. It's not like you hit 10 for the first time to only hit 10 from then on. Nah, we flirt with success, which is another lesson that I've learned. And it's the flirtation of forward movement, meaning you do this, do this, do this, you pop your head above the goal, and then you usually fall right back down because it's not a standard yet. What happens is your ceilings become a floor. Now you wake up one day and it might be on year two or year three. And maybe on year one, you take 10 listings six months out of 12. Then maybe another year, you take it 10 months out of 12. Before you know it, if you keep at it, you'll wake up and you'll go, huh, I'm so used to taking 10 listings a month. It'd be weird if I didn't do it. It'd be strange. Like if I wasn't putting a new listing in the MLS every couple of days, I'd begin to twitch. It would just be strange for me. And that's what I mean by you're committed to your standards. That's what matters. Now, your standards end up creating opportunity. Your standards end up creating appointments. I don't think you go out and look for listings. And I think if you go out and look for listings, you'll probably find one. But your standard will be that you look for listings when you need it. 
which means that's what you'll get over and over and over again. What I'd rather have you to do is I'd rather have you create opportunity by focusing on the habitual standards of doing the same thing again and again and again and again and again and again. And maybe one month you said, I mean, like in the, in the seven steps to 10 listings, uh, Lacey already dropped it in the, in the chat for you. There's a link for an ebook. It's totally free. Go check it out. But in that ebook, I talk about those seven steps and it's getting in the habit of setting an appointment a day. Now, if you do that, that's going to be 22 most months. That's going to be 22 listing appointments. People say it's a numbers game but they say it without any meaning. It really is a numbers game. And when you're doing something like CMA a day and you're doing something like seven steps to 10 listings, you're putting those things together. Before you know it, those 22 new appointments a month, maybe you only go on 13 of them or 14 of them because a couple of them cancel. Or when you're going through and qualifying them before you drive out to their house or they come to meet you at the office or whatever's appropriate for you, you end up saying, yeah, it's not quite time yet. But if you set 22, you're going to go on 12 or 14 over time. And I don't know a single agent who can't go on 12 or 14 listing appointments a month and not accidentally begin taking 10 a month. And I want you to see just how different that is from hunting from a new listing or turning over leaves, looking for a new listing or turning rocks over. Those are all good things to do. And if you're listening to me and you need a listing, that's probably what you're going to go do. But until you break the cycle of that habit, it's all you're ever going to do. And I think that's the bigger comeuppance that we all face is how do we do something that such it creates a habit. And you think about, like, I stole this, this whole idea. I stole um, the term of it from my friend, John Chaplack, who's absolutely worth a follow on Instagram or uh, Facebook. Uh, by the way, if we're not connected on Instagram, I'm Cody Gibson one. That's the easiest place, just the numeral one. Uh, but John Chaplack was talking one day about uh, hinges. And one of the things that you're doing by doing like the CMA a day and going through that with Lone Depot is that you're focusing on hinges and you think about this great big door and maybe it weighs 50 pounds or maybe it's a, a fire rated double-sided blah 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 you know solid wood door like whatever and it's a hundred pounds well you think about that and you think about how hard it is to move that door unless it's on three little hinges and you think about how small those little hinges are but you think about what task they perform you see you and i could walk up to almost any door and we could open it or close it with our, with our, with our index finger, 100 pounds. But if it wasn't on a hinge, you and I would have to use all of our might and struggle to try to open that door. And the habits that you have around the prospecting or the marketing inside of your business, the idea of a CMA a day, the idea of seven steps to 10 listings, ladies and gentlemen, that's what you do. That's what you focus on. And those are the itty bitty hinges that swing open these great big doors. And what I want you to think about right now is that you're probably like, good Lord, it's November 1st today. It's basically Christmas. It's basically next year. Like everything you're doing, somebody asked me to come and speak maybe two months ago. And they said, hey, we really want you to come out, Cody, and talk about, and I do a bunch of speaking in person, right? And they said, we really, really want you to come out and talk about how to end the year strong. And I said, no. No, thanks. Screw you. Don't want to talk about that. Because the truth is, if we were going to talk about ending the year strong, we should have started back in Q2. You and I know the majority of what we do has a 100 or 150 day tail before yeah. we can make any changes, we can look at it, and then we could we could shift or we can, uh, we can pivot, or before we ever see any type of results. So the truth is what you and I are doing right now, if you go out and do a CMA a day, or you go out and do seven steps to 10 listings today, you don't see those results today. You're probably, you're probably like I'm telling my team members, my partners, everything you're doing today is probably already deep quarter one of next year. Mm -hmm. Everything you do or don't do is probably the third week of February, fourth week of February right now. And so it's too late. Like it's too late. And I wish, I wish we would quit using uh, like a Roman calendar of January one through December 31 for our business. Our businesses don't work that way. If you want to do, if you want a big 2022, hmm, you probably should have started in May. You're three months behind, 16 weeks, actually. <laughs> right. Yeah. Already behind. Like the, like the, the biggest earner I know in our industry and the biggest thinker I know in our industry is Gary Keller. And we yeah. were talking, it was probably back in June that he made this comment to me. We were talking about how we were tired, right? Like think about what June looked like this year. 
And he goes, yeah, I'm tired too. And I said something about 2022 and he kind of chuckled and he said, what about 2025? He said, most of what I'm working on, these are his words. He goes, most of what I'm working on right now is actually 2025. He said in his world, and of course, the bigger the business, the more true this is. He said in his world, 2022 was pretty much already played out. Wow. It's still not even 2022 yet. And he said 2023 was mostly played out. And of course, the point he was making, he was saying, listen, to do what I want to do with a company the size of Keller Williams, a business this size, he goes, most of what I do is three years out, four yeah. years out. I make a play, I make a hire, I make a move, I do something. Your and my business looks the same. It's just that most of it's not three or four years out, except geographic farm. Like before, that's really supplying you business. That might be three or four years. A sociographic farm might be three or four years. And I, I just want you to think, and in fact, it's always worth writing this down. And I know you've heard it before, but I want you to, to write this down, that we tend to overestimate what we can do in a year. And we vastly underestimate what can be done in three, four, or five years. You look at what your business looks like, and anybody listening to me could have a business that's selling hundreds of units a year in four or five years. I don't know that you're going to go from 10 units a year to 150 the next year. You could. It's possible. Yes, it's possible. I've only seen it done a couple of times, which means it absolutely could happen, but it's not the norm. The norm would be that you go from 10 to 20 or 30, and then you get really good at 20 or 30. You get really good at doing three units every single month, and then you go, okay, I'm going to take another step forward, and you get to about 70 or 75. It's not that hard to go from 35 or 40 units a year to 75. It's actually a pretty easy move, but to go from 75 units to like 120 or 140, it's massive. Like that tends to be one of those giant jumps where you might hit your head against the ceiling for a year or two. That's okay. Whoever said that wasn't the way business looked. Like we walked into 2021, we walked into 2021 hoping that we would go to 1800 or 2000 units. Didn't happen for me. We didn't grow enough in the fourth quarter of 2020 and the first two quarters of 2021. And so we knew by May or June of 2021, we had no chance of hitting 2000 units this year. And when that happens, you go, okay, there's no chance of that happening. Like, it's just not going to happen unless a meteor falls out of the sky and it has 500 units attached to it. I'm not going to hit 2,000 units this year. And so in May or June, what you do is you go, okay, knowing what I do know, what do I need to do the rest of this year that puts me in the best optimal position to hit 2,000 units next year? And so I'm going to wrap up this year, 2021, with a good, healthy 20 or 25% increase from 2020. But my goal was to double. And I always question, like, I always think, okay, if my goal wasn't to double, would we have had a 25% increase? Like everyone's heard the old term of like, shoot for the moon, right? And, and even if you miss, you land among the stars. Like, I mean, yeah. and I've always kind of thought it was a sort of a cheesy saying, uh, but it's not untrue. But remember, some people, they shoot for a goal so low that they don't actually land among the stars, they actually barely get out of the roof of their building. Like it's just not big enough for them. And for me, for a 25% increase, when your unit count is at a thousand, that's a lot. But I remember when a 25% increase in unit count was only four or five units a year for me. Like that was nothing, that wasn't a big deal. But the bigger you get, like the harder it becomes. So I say all of that to say this, if you'll do these three things, it's not that you'll cease to have problems, but your problems will just look different. And I want you to write this down, right? New levels, new devils. But the first thing is, if you get in the habit of never going to bed without first setting a new appointment, who even cares how good the appointment is? There's going to be seasons of your career that the appointments are great. There's going to be seasons in your career that you're going to go, whoa, who the hell turned off the lights around here? Like, these are hard. So what? Two blah, blah, blah. That's going to happen. It doesn't matter. You and I don't get to create it. So all we can create is our habit within it. So if we get in the habit of one appointment a day, just one, and if it takes you a month to get there or a year to get there, who cares? It, it really doesn't matter. Like it, it means nothing. Unless you're going to retire this year, who cares? It doesn't matter. Just keep moving. The second thing is this. How do you provide world-class service? Our industry right now is at a giant crossroads of what world-class service looks like. It is not getting the job done. 
It is not getting to closing. It is not negotiating well for your clients. All of those things could be part of world-class service. But I think you should be doing what I'm doing right now. I go to bed and I wake up wondering, huh, what the hell does world-class service look like to the consumer right now? And I'll tell you, being one of the biggest agents in our country, I don't know the answer. And to a degree, I kind of feel like anybody who says they know the answer is either crazy, stupid, or a liar. Like, I don't know that anybody knows. I think that we're all searching. And I think one of the most important things for me is sometimes searching for the answer is even more important than knowing the answer. But I don't know necessarily what the consumer wants. I'm not sure the consumer 100% knows what they want right now. But I do know this. I do know that what you and I do for a living is being stacked up against things like Amazon. Mm -hmm. I do know that what you and I do for a living is being stacked up against um, things like FedEx. Like, let, 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 me, let me just give this, I know we're short on time, like two minutes left, but, but for most of us, somebody could put pictures in an envelope and overnight them to Dubai, India and get them there by six o'clock tomorrow but yet their realtor can't get the flyer box full of new pictures for seven days. Now, I'm not sure anyone's ever going to use that example, but it's subconsciously, that's what goes through their mind. They have to ask us for eight days to get the MLS verbiage changed. They could have FedEx the verbiage change to the other side of the world three times in that amount of time. And they're never going to say that to you that way. But that's the expectation. The expectation is now. The expectation is if I have to ask, you already lost with me. If I have to ask you to do it, it's already moved upside down from world-class service. And so number one was setting an appointment a day. Number two, what does world-class service look like? And I don't know that you need the answer. I just think you need to ask it every day. You go to bed thinking it, you wake up thinking it. And I think what's going to happen is you're going to build a better world-class service inside your own organization. The third piece is this, and I'll leave you with this thought. I want you to move from running a practice to running a business. And they're two ultimately entirely diabolically vastly different things. Running a business means you have a P&L. Running a business means you have a book of accounts. Running a business means that you have a budget. And those things are hard and they're not common for us. You and I aren't cut from that cloth. Just quit waiting for the day that you wake up and go, yes, today's the day I feel like creating a P&L. Get out of here, it's not, it's not coming. It ain't coming. What you need to do is wake up and go, I hired someone to do it, or I paid somebody a hundred bucks to do it. And I'm going to pay them a hundred bucks a month for all the months I don't do it until I get them what they need. So they start doing it. And sooner or later, the hundred dollars a month is enough pain that I finally do it. Like that's all fine with me. All of it is okay. But you begin to move forward and you begin to treat it like a true business. What that also means is you begin to treat your client list like a true business. The one thing that technology can't replace is relationship. It will 100% replace everything else. For realtors that say, yes, yes, people need us. People need us. They always will need us. I don't know, man. There was a whole group of cabbies who died a long time ago that said people needed cab drivers that said only we know these cities as well as we do. There's no way that an app is going to replace us. Hmm, an app replaced them except for New York City, an app 100% replaced them. And there was a whole group of stockbrokers someday that probably sat around and said, no, no, they need us. And all those stockbrokers have been replaced by electronic platforms. Yes. And I want you to think, I don't need you to be scared. I don't need you to be scared. But if you're in this business for more than 24 more months, I think it's going to change dramatically. I think it's going to change radically. It doesn't scare me because I don't get to control it anyway. So I choose not to be scared of things that I have no control over. But that's my point to a world-class service business. You've got to look and say, where's the consumer going and how do I get in front of her? Where's the consumer going and how do I communicate with them the way he wants to? Not the way I want him to. Stop all Come of to that. Their level. It. Yeah, it's irrelevant. To their level. So that's a lot of blabbing and a lot of that words. Is uh, like I took notes here. I, I always, I have said, I have, so now you're like the 10th person I've interviewed. And I have said, after all of these calls, you guys make me want to be an agent, but not only that, it really applies to my business too, because every morning I want to wake up and ask myself, who's another family who needs me today. Somebody said something to me over the weekend 
where I realized that a lot of times I am, not only am I the first person that they have spoken to about their finances, in a lot of cases, I'm the only person that they have spoken to about their finances. They have an app, do their taxes, they they have, they they go, they do their banking and they never they don't know anything about saving money. And it's really so when you talk about world class service, I do, I wake up, what does that mean? What does that mean to to a person today? So um before I let you go, I would like you to do a quick plug because I know you are going to be the keynote speaker for this Wednesday, November 3rd. Um yes for the Modern Real Estate Summit for all. All right, guys. All right, so this is interactive. So what do you guys think? Cody Gibson, like, I wanna go to family reunion or whatever you guys do for Keller Williams just to hear this man speak because he did speak at the Modern Real Estate Summit for us. And he taught and he expounded on that um, build your business like a business and not like a job. And he talked about how to sell your business. And ever since he said that, it has really given me food for thought because I could do that with my mortgage business. Our clients are worth something. These companies, Amazon, Netflix, Uber, they spend millions of dollars on capturing people's data. So, um, okay, so now this is the interactive part. What did you guys think? Thoughts, comments? Um, what are some things that you were thinking about? Alice, you're the only one with me, it looks like. <laughs> I think that's amazing. I mean, everything he's saying there, it just makes so much sense, you know? I want to give my clients the world-class uh, service that they need. So I do have to look in my brains, like what I could do to do that every day. In my brains right now, I think about what two contracts can I put uh, for the month. But I mean, he tells me about like 10, like, oh my God, I can't even wrap my head around doing 10 and that kind of money. So I yeah. just have to think big. I know I could do it. It's just that I'm thinking two all the time, like two, but no, I'm thinking now like 10. <laughs> well, and, and what did he say? He said, um, we flirt with success, right? So I can, I can equate this. Yeah. When I, the first time I closed one loan in a month, I was ecstatic. Then I closed two loans, like then I did one loan and two loans. Then all of a sudden it was three loans in a month. And now I average like 12 to 15 loans in a month. So I'm, I'm out 12 to 15. So to the point now where if I didn't close 12 to 15 loans a month, like what he said, I would twitch. So <laughs> he was talking about, you know, first you might do six out of, first you might do three out of 12, then you do six out of 12, then you do 12, then, then suddenly that becomes your standard. And, and he said it real simple and he, and we got to chat a little bit after this call, but it's one a day, it's one right. per day. And I, I'm going to include it in here for you guys. Hang on, let me just exit out of here. I'm gonna grab it for you so you guys can see it. But it says seven steps to 10 listings. He keeps it real simple. So I just threw that in the yeah. chat, so grab that. Um, and as you flip through this, it's all very, very simple stuff. Um, so let me share the screen with you real quick so you can see this. So one listing appointment every day. So that's the first thing you wanna focus on, one listing appointment every day. And he says, visit one FISBO or expired. Don't download a database from, from Mojo and call, you know, a hundred FISBOs, call one FISBO until they have an appointment with you. There you go. So he has a system. So, okay. So when you're making your list of who to call, it's, I'm going to call one FISBO a day. And then on Wednesdays, you're going to follow up with those people. And then you're going to post something about for buyers. And then every seller, every week, it, I read through this and I was blown away by how simple it is. Simple, not easy. 
So, um, so I really wanted to share that with you guys because um, the fact that I was able to get Cody's attention for 45 minutes was such an honor. I can't even tell you. Um, so now the question is, all right, so, so for, you know, Alice and Debbie, you guys are here with me. Are you committed to one a day? Because that was the next thing he talked about. Are you committed to looking for one a day? Or are you just going to hunt for one when you need it? That I thought was interesting because there's a difference between having a system in place to look for one every day versus look hunting for it. You're yeah. like, oh, it's Friday. I don't have a listing. Rick's running a contest. I better get a list. Or one falls in your lap right. because the past client felt felt. The idea is to be proactive with it. Right. So um yeah, that's it. I, I just gonna put that one a day. I mean, I don't know what that's gonna look like, but I'm gonna do it. I can do yeah. it. I know I can do it. <laughs> well, Deb, you talked today about how you you got your team with your daughter. And you know, if you guys are all focused on buyers and no one has any listings, then then you yeah, know you need to focus on one listing a day. So if I were you guys, I would start with Cody's seven steps to 10 listings start right. there do you have that um paperwork yep, i just put it i just put email? it in the chat okay. i just yeah i just put it in the chat so grab it out of the chat okay it's a website so it's not even a pdf oh. it's a website okay all right now okay. the next thing i wanted to show you guys is the i am just starting to do this now it is a move up analysis CMA TCA combination. So basically, this is what it looks like. Um, so let me share my screen again. So my friend Scott Nicholson in California developed this website called Lending La Lender Launchpad. And basically, what he does is he partners with listing agents and he creates this um, move up assessment report. So he's got a couple of different presentations in here. And basically what it is, is it is your CMA. So Deb, you give me your CMA uh -huh. and then I prepare a total cost analysis to couple with it. So then okay. you are giving it to your agent. Let me find one here. Um, I'm like so excited. I can't believe like Gary Keller two years ago. I'm thinking about this yet. Yeah, he's already he's already three I'm years so ahead. Lost, like, it's, yeah, yeah. I'm what so behind say? time, according to him. Well, and honestly, we're you know in our mind. I know, 2025. Like, oh my god. In our mind, and I'll tell you, I have learned to think like this now too. But in, in our mind, it's only 2022. But you know what? In my mind, it's already June. Yeah. I'm already thinking. Okay, it's June, and I need to make sure my goals match June. Like. I am already ahead. I'm like, for me, I'm like six months out when I'm making my goals. So I'm gonna put this up here just in case anyone watches later. But so what I am committed to do for all of you, you who are watching and those of you who may watch later is this CMA TC, TCA a day. And this is the presentation that we will send your, your future listing clients. Think about the listing agent. He talks about world-class. Yeah, everybody puts together a PowerPoint presentation. Everybody everybody has the same listing presentation. I've seen like a thousand of them and they're all very much the same. How is yours going to be different? So here's my challenge to you. What if you took your CMA that you always do, like this is just a Word document this person used right here that you see on the screen, move up analysis, net sheet, CMA report. This is just a Word document. And what they did was they uploaded the CMA report into this presentation. So now when the borrower goes in to look at this, they are going to see this Word document that you guys all do, that everyone does. And now it's in a website generated. It's in, it's in a piece of technology that they can see. So now they're able to flip through it. So for those of you who are not technology driven, you don't have to be because guess what your listing lender is. So now I 
take your Word document or your PDF and I upload it into this presentation. We have a little video that talks about the house. Some of them, some of you guys could use, um, what is it that you use? Um, I can't remember what it is now. Dan uses it a lot, but you guys use your listing things. And then what that then I record a video on who I am. I get to introduce myself. We got a video from you introducing yourself. We add the total cost analysis presentation in here. And now they are able to see. So now just they're not on the call, but they probably wouldn't mind. I use their names all the time. Let's say you send this ahead of your listing appointment. Your listing appointment is scheduled for um, two o'clock on Monday, and you send this as a link to your buyer um, over the weekend, they get to review it. And let's say that the Kassendorf team, the, the Auslander Kassendorf or the Carosa team show up for that listing before you have a chance to present. Don't you think having this ahead of them is going to give you that little bit of an advantage? So that's what I want you guys to think about. So that's all I have for you guys today. Um, thank you for tuning in. If you did tune in. Thank you. That was awesome. I'm glad. Um, I don't know if there's any questions, but that's what I'm committed to doing. Um, I'm going to do this presentation again, but I'm going to do it on a much larger scale and I'm going to make it available to other people. But those of you who watched got to really see what I'm doing. So I am not your typical order taker, pretty rate shopper. Like I am committed to helping you guys sell more homes. So that's it. Good job. We love that. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome, guys. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, just give Thank me a you. quick, give me a, just give me something. Bye. <laughs>